what planned to be just a year of living off-grid to figure out who I was has now turned into an adventure of 14 years learning about sustainability and self-sufficiency. So the Luna Project is what I've called it, which is learning unique natural alternatives. And for me, it's always about learning what else I can do to kind of become more self-sufficient and sustainable. So yeah, so this year, winter, summer, spring in Southern Ontario for 14, 14 years, 14 amazing learning eventful years. <laughs>this is a 24 foot Pacific Yurts uh, made in Cottage Grove, Oregon, insulated and uh, 452 square feet. The insulation is Reflectix insulation. So it's got the tin foil and bubble wrap um, and then it's got a cloth layer on the one side. When I first insulated, I, I was doing everything I possibly could to just use recycled materials and I had zero budget when I started. So I found all of this great pink bat insulation. And so I just crammed that underneath and it was great, but then the rodents got into it and it was a huge mess. So um, afterwards I put in Roxel insulation and put chicken wire over top. We are on our family's property. So my dad purchased farm in 1973 um, with the hope of raising his kids in the country. When I was going through school and even being raised as the youngest in the family, there was times in my life that I need to kind of get away. And for me, getting away was coming back to the forest and was spending time here. And then I ended up taking a job in our family's brokerage firm in Toronto. And um, I thought that was the right thing to do, but I wasn't happy. I kept taking off again. And then in 2002, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. I remember getting the phone call when I was in Toronto. And um, I think something changed inside me very quickly and it was like life is very short i'm not enjoying doing this i need out so i came home and i told my dad i'm going to start a canoe tripping company so i can get people into nature and get them to connect with nature and de-stress because everyone's got too much stress in their lives i figured on the yurt because it was a simple portable building and and i didn't have to put a heavy weight on the landscape that i loved so dearly as a child and I moved in and there was nothing. There was no power, there was no nothing. I thought, great, what have I done? I knew nothing about solar and wind and composting or anything. The focus for me was supposed to be the wood stove. And so the bed was beside the wood stove and you could see it from all different parts of the yurt and that was, that was key. I was using furniture to kind of create my walls. The open space started to kind of wear on me and so I started putting in walls. And it was a nice divider to kind of give me some space and some privacy. And I think at the time I was really trying to attract a wife. We've been together now, it'll be five years this July 13th. So we, um, we're getting married here on the property uh, where our first kiss happened, which was on the pond. I wanted a spot to sit where I could kind of like a little cubby. So when you walk in, um, there's kind of the, the living room, I guess, with a couch and I had a television in there. Um, and that's where I'd spend a lot of you know, cold nights would be curled up on the couch, either reading a book or watching Netflix. Cause as soon as I got internet, it was like, yay, Netflix. The bathroom has always been here, but it wasn't ever that big. So there was a Sunmar composting toilet in it. And then I took that out um, when Trish moved in and we just put a urine separating pail toilet, which has been fantastic. It, I don't know why everybody doesn't do it. The bedroom again was, you know, with the sliding door and a bigger closet for the two of us, it was nice because we could have a bit of privacy. If, if, you know, I was in bed and Trish came home late from teaching yoga, then, you know, it wasn't as much of a disturbance, right? But before it just used to be, you know, you open up the door and you can see the bed, there was no real privacy, right? And the kitchen, I just wanted a little, a nice little spot that was functional and easy for, for us to use. And it was tricky at first to try and figure out how much space to use, but I, I knew I really wanted a loft. And the loft has two purposes, number one for company and number two, that's where all my water is. So it's gravity fed water to both the kitchen and the bathroom sink. To get that water, um, I ordered the yurt with a water catchment system on the roof, which serves two incredible purposes. One is it keeps the walls of the yurt clean. Um, so you don't have as much staining from water. So that water goes into a thousand liter tank, which is outside and insulated. And then I have a guzzler hand pump on the bathroom wall and it's about 400 pumps to pump 35 gallons of water and that goes up into the loft and then it feeds down to the to the two sinks for the shower and the tub there's a small little sure flow pump and a pressure tank and as soon as you turn on the hot water tap water is forced through um, just a propane hot water heater on demand and then comes out 
the shower, so you have you have hot water, which is fantastic. Is it the perfect solution to what I want? Absolutely not. There's way more efficient ways. It's like I keep saying propane is like the off-gridder's dirty little secret. It's um, I don't like burning propane, but right now it's the easiest thing to do, right? So, yeah, and I think I said to somebody the other day that um, I probably could have saved a lot of money by hooking myself up to the grid and just being normal. So for power, there's two 170 watt solar panels, a 400 watt uh, Airx wind turbine, and they have been running continually since 2005. I lost one wind turbine to a lightning strike, um, and I've replaced the batteries I think twice. Every time I've replaced them, I've just bought like, I've either found or just bought like old ones. And this last time I actually bought new ones. 360 amp hours. But it's a very small little system, uh, but it's powered everything that we've needed from television, lights, water pump, internet, um, fridge freezer. We bought a, a unique appliances, I think they're called. Um, fridge freezer combo, and it's fantastic. It runs off its own solar panel and battery. Seeing there wasn't a ton of money at the time, I was using everything that I could salvage. So I had the barns rebuilt at the farm and then any bit of wood that was left over, I saved. And all of that wood has got into like, the countertops were the, uh, the old thrashing boards. So, and some of the boards were 22 inches wide, 18, 18 feet long, two inches thick. So beautiful wood. And when you go into the sauna, the chicken coop, it's all the same. So um, I've tried to use as much reclaimed material as possible. The eco shed, however, when you go up there, that was built by a grade 10 class. Just about everything in that building is recycled. So how I make my income throughout the year, uh, throughout the summer actually, is I guide um, multi-day canoe trips through Northern Ontario and Quebec and um, families and schools contract me to outfit them. Uh, so I'll plan the, plan the routes to all the food, all the gear, and now we're running uh, yoga wellness retreats and Airbnb and anything we can to kind of get people back out into the environment. The biggest thing that I've struggled with is water. Um, and in the winter time, water freezes. So my first indoor shower was in 2007, two years after I lived here. Um, and I've had winters where I've had to carry water from the pond. I think that was a challenge, but it depends on what you consider challenging, right? Because just the act of carrying your own water teaches you a greater respect for that water. Um, I think sometimes if I look at those as challenges, yes, I think the, the temperature thing so you can be very, very comfortable in a yurt. They can be very efficient, but you have to really think about how you're building. And I tucked mine onto a hill. So as I mentioned, you've got all the wind blowing underground, but I wanted also like looking at nature, you see how everything is in a south facing hillside, right? So I think anytime you build a structure, you should really walk into your environment and say, okay, what fits here, right? Not because when we build, we move things away and then we put it back the way that we want to we want to see it rather than how can I integrate myself into this complex system. So for me, I wish maybe that um, I was a little deeper underground or connected to the earth and not have been so high that my water system was a little bit more reliable in the winter time. Uh, and my heat source, it hasn't been that bad, but it's always a little bit of work to keep the wood stove going. But I oversized the wood stove so that we could stay in bed all night and get up at six in the morning. If I were to do it again, you know, we've talked about purchasing another yurt and moving in a yurt on a, uh, to a different location of the property. But I look at the materials that the yurt's made from, it's no different than a trailer or anything else. It's like, what's the longevity? How are they made? Uh, what sort of impact is that having on the world around me? And I have this weird thing where I wanna go subterranean now. I really wanna go underground, much similar to an earthship idea. Um, you know, go underground, enjoy the sun on, with a passive solar wall and I think that would be so dreamy, but I want to use it all with sustainable materials and something that's going to last forever, right? The biggest thing that I loved about living back here is what it's done for me uh, mentally and spiritually. I was not like this when I moved in and the transformation that's happened has been directly related to this structure because of that connection with the outdoors. In a yurt, you feel the heat, you feel the cold, you hear the birds, you are directly linked to your environment. Um, I love the fact of having a more burdenful life rather than a burden-free life. 
And when you add that little bit of burden, so when you have to make your own heat and pump your own water, make your own power, it makes everything that much more worthwhile. Please share this video if you liked it. Also, be sure to subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. Thanks for watching.